All right, so in 5.5, we're going to be looking into solving two-step equations. 5.3 and 5.4 dealt with one-step equations. So it's a little bit more challenging, and you're going to have to make sure you're familiar with your integer rules. So just like the word two-step, there's two operations that you have to undo in order to get to your variable. So the first thing you need to do is the inverse operation of any addition or subtraction. And then the second thing is you do the inverse operation of multiplication or division. So it really depends on what the equation looks like. So here's your example. 2x plus 1 equals 5. So this would be like I have my gift. First thing I did was multiply it by 2 and then add it 1. So I have to go backwards, like if I was unwrapping a gift. The last thing I did was add a 1, so that's the first thing I have to undo. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and that's going to leave me with 2x equals 4, because 1 minus 1 is 0. <laughs> 5 minus 1 is 4. Now I have to undo my multiplication by dividing by 2 both sides. 2 divided by 2 is 1 and that's going to leave me with my present all by itself and that's going to equal 2. 4 divided by 2. two. If I went back in and checked, oh yeah, 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5. And again, I know a lot of you say, oh I can just do that in my head, but it's going to get more difficult, especially when you get into algebra. and You're going to want to make sure you know how to write these down. So let's go ahead and practice. First thing I'm going to do is the last thing that was done. So I have my present, I multiplied it by 3, and then I subtracted 4. So the last thing was to subtract 4. So that's the first thing I have to do. So I'm going to, instead of subtracting, I want to do the inverse. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That's going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with 3x equals 15. Now I'm to my one step where I isolate the variable. It's being multiplied by 3, so I have to divide by 3. And then I'm going to be left with x equals 5. And you could go back in and do a check as well and say 3 times 5 minus 4, that equals 11. 15 minus 4 equals 11. So again, let's take a look at what we need to do. I had my gift, I divided it by 2, and then I subtracted 14. So subtract 14 was the last thing I did, so that's the very first thing that I have to undo. So instead of a minus 14, I have to undo that, so I'm going to add 14 to both sides. Minus 14 plus 14 cancels out to 0. You're left with x divided by 2 equals, and that's going to be 22. So I took care of one step, but I still have one more step to go. So I have to undo my division. To undo that, the opposite inverse operation is multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm left with x equals 44. All right, and so again, you're going to have these negatives in here, so we want to make sure we know how to write them down. First thing I need to do is get rid of this add 5. So to undo addition, I'm going to subtract both sides by 5. I'm going to be left with negative 6x equals, then 23 minus 5 is 18. Then the second thing I have to do is get rid of this multiply by negative 6. To undo a multiplication, I have to divide. So divide by negative 6, both sides. Six, negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. So I'm going to be left with x equals negative 3. And remember, it's a negative because it's a positive 18 divided by a negative 6. Alright, and this one's a little bit more challenging because I have this subtraction sign here. 
So a couple of different things you could do. You could go ahead and change your subtraction to addition if you would like. So that way you don't have that. So 7, so add a line, and then I change the sign, make this negative 8x. You don't have to do that. You'd still get the same answer. But if you want to, you can. So I have this positive 5 here. I need to get rid of this. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I'm going to be left with 2 equals negative 8x. And then I need to get rid of this negative 8. To get rid of a multiplication, I have to divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8. So this divides out to 1, and I'm left with, I'm just going to go ahead and write it over here. It's going to be 2 over negative 8 equals x. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this just with a negative out to the side. It's really a negative 1. And then I'm going to simplify this by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2. So that's going to give me 1 over 4. So x equals 1 fourth. You could always change that fraction 2 to a decimal and make it 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Okay, a couple more examples. I'm going to go ahead and show you without changing this to um, addition. Again, it doesn't really matter. You just need to know that this subtraction sign will make this a negative. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this positive 100 by minusing 100 from both sides. So this is going to be negative 7r equals, and then off to this side, this is 44 minus 100. So 44 minus 100. So Adeline changed the sign. So 44 plus negative 100. And if you were to use the scoreboard way, if you're still having a hard time with the positive and negative numbers, you have positive 44 and 100 points for the negative. So you know your answer is going to be negative. And then I'm going to take 100 minus 44. Hopefully you can do that in your head. If you can't, you want to do that old school. So you're going to go ahead and borrow from this guy, borrow from him, and you're going to get 6, and then you're going to get 5. So negative 56. And then again, it's two steps. So I need to get rid of this negative 7. That's multiplying the variable. So I have to divide by negative 7. So this divides out, and I'm left with r equals a positive 8. 8 times 7, 56. And a negative divided by a negative would make it a positive. All right, and then let's just do this last one here. So 2x, I'm multiplying it by 2, and then I'm dividing. So I have to undo this division. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I'm going to be left with 2x equals negative 24. So we're almost done. We need this variable to be by itself. So it's multiplied by 2, so I have to divide by 2. I'm going to divide by 2. So x equals negative 12. So again, two steps. I have to do two different things to get the variable all by itself. So this next problem is going to be one that you'll see. It's a real world problem that you want to set up an equation for. One strategy is to do what we call a no find chart. What do I know and what do I need to find? So Kathy ordered a pizza that cost $8. So I know that she paid $8 for the pizza. 50 cents for each topping. And I'm running out of room. The total cost was $10. So what I need to find is the number of extra toppings.
So to set up an equation, you can think about, okay, well, I know she paid $8, and then she added 50 cents for each topping. I don't know how many toppings she has, so that's going to be my variable. So it's going to be 0 0.5, or you can put, make it 50 over 100 if you want, or um, just 0 0.5 or 5 tenths times t. The total, though, is going to be $10. So to find what my variable is, I have to undo what was done. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I'm going to be left with 0 0.50 times t, or 50 cents times t, equals 2. Now I need to get t all by itself, so I'm going to divide by 50 cents. Divide by 50 cents. And I my number of toppings is going to equal four. So she had a total of four toppings. So what we did is we wrote the equation that represented the situation and we solved for the unknown variable. All right, so we'll be practicing this in class.